Good morning, everyone. TJ here for the second week of our E Well, Be Well series. For week two, uh, we are going to be talking about portions um, and also how to kind of build a proper plate, um, AKA like a meal builder. We do have a meal builder tool um, for Exos, but I will share that later um, in uh, slides to come. So I'll address questions along the way, um, and then uh, we'll see what we have for time. All right, so let's begin. All right, so the first part, I'm going to talk about portions. The second piece is going to be the meal builder. And then week, um, not week three, but um, part three will be like action items, which will pretty much be review, um, and then a challenge, uh, which is completely optional. All right, so for our portions, so <clears throat> EXOS and the nutrition certification that I have go very hand in hand when it comes to, um, you know, portion sizes and how to go about that. You know, we've always kind of gone off of, you know, more in the sense of like numerical uh, type stuff. So in that sense of like saying, you know, aiming for like four ounces of a protein or, um, you know, only like a half cup of like carbohydrates. So for this particular um, portion piece, we're going to kind of be utilizing the hand as like our tool um, for, you know, our fruits, our veggies, you know, our carbs, our fats. So sometimes that can be kind of the easiest way to kind of base, you know, how much you should be eating. Um, so we will begin with that. And so for the prevention piece, which would be like the veggies, so this is very unlimited. You know, you could eat, eat as many veggies as you want, as long as they are brightly colored. Um, you know, again, how you cook them um, will also determine, you know, how much of those nutrients um, you're getting. Um, obviously that we know fresh would be better than canned, but you know, frozen vegetables are just as good as fresh vegetables. Uh, you just want to make sure that you season them, um, whether it's salt and pepper, or finding other ways to season them just to bring a little bit of flavor to it um, since they are frozen vegetables. So for the building aspect, you know, with the proteins, this particular piece is going to be the palm of our hand. So I know that everyone has you know, a palm size that varies from person to person. You know, my palm size might be a lot bigger than somebody else's, but, you know, it's kind of more relative to us. Um, so for your palm size of protein, which is roughly about three ounces or so, um, is what you should be getting per meal. So again, these are all per meal. Um, and as a review from what we talked about with protein um, choices is making sure that something is lean, um, you know, just to help with the, the building process or the repair, as I like to say. All right, so the next piece is going to be fuel. So if you remember the fuel was our carbohydrates, um, and this is gonna be more based off of a fist. So a half cup of, carbs, you know, would be actually, again, depending on fist size, that it might be half of your fist, or it might be a little bit more, you know, of that whole, you know, fist itself. Now, we'll get more into um, what constitutes um, a serving size for carbs. So we'll move on to the next one. So for the prevention piece, just like we talked about with veggies, are fruits. So a serving size for fruits in this case could be like we would say a tennis ball, but I know when we talked about like a hand size that we could probably say like half of the fist should be like the size of a fruit. You get a lot of fruit out there that's definitely, you know, more than one portion. And I think that's just because 
you know, I think some of those more kind of genetically modified fruits tend to be a lot bigger in size. And then last, we'll talk about um, fats and that serving size. So again, fats are what um, are going to help protect the body. And so we're going to use the first portion of our thumbs. So wherever that line is in our thumb, it's going to be one portion. So we'll talk more about what that uh, relates to in the sense of, you know, a portion size. So let's move on. All right, so here we're talking about our fuel sources. Um, this could be a variety of things. This could be, you know, carbs. This could be certain vegetables that are starchy. Um, again, grains, cereals. You know, we want to make sure that we're picking like cereals and grains and starchy vegetables that um, do have more nutritional value. Um, and again, addressing from what I talked about last week when I said that potatoes, you know, potatoes would be fine. Um, again, just keeping it within like an appropriate size, uh, how you cook it could make all the difference too. Because if you're frying, you know, let's say a potato, you know, and you're thinking French fries, you know that the nutritional value is not going to be as great as if you were to like, let's say you know, you know, like you bake it, that would be a lot better for you. So the serving size is a half cup. And so, like I said, it would be roughly half a fist, um, you know, maybe a little more depending on the size of your fist. Um, but if we were talking about other, you know, portion sizes, that could be like one six inch tortilla, or that could be, you know, a slice of bread, you know, possibly two slices of bread could be a serving size, but you want to make sure that that, um, that at least one slice of bread has at least, you know, three grams of fiber, unless the package says two slices, hopefully it would roughly have like, you know, four or five grams of fiber. Um, so that's kind of important um, to talk about as well. So when it comes to, you know, like bread in general and cereals, you know, like those particular things, they are processed. So we do want to be careful with, um, you know, eating more processed foods um, just because they do break down quicker in the body. Um, but the thing about bread um, and maybe certain cereals or, in, you know, some diets don't really allow bread in the diet, but I don't really want to dive too deep into like specific diets. But if we were to go back to last week's um, conversation about some people have sensitivities to gluten. Um, and so you've got to be, you know, careful of that, whether you're gluten intolerant or gluten sensitive um, is the question. And and that varies from person to person. And some people don't know, don't know that they have a sensitivity to gluten. Um, but again, just be careful of um, processed carbohydrates. All right, so we'll move on. All right, so fresh fruit. So here I put that, you know, again, it's a prevention piece, you know, just like our vegetables, but fresh fruit, you know, is a lot better than, you know, dried fruit or even like a four ounce glass of juice. Um, so just starting at the very top, you know, a fresh fruit serving is a half cup. Again, if you think of either a tennis ball or half of your fist, you know, is going to have a lot more fiber and nutrients. And usually you find those things closer to the skin. Um, but obviously for fruits that are, you know, have edible skin, I'm not suggesting that you go eating the uh, the hairy piece of a uh, of a kiwi because that wouldn't be appealing. Um, actually, probably <laughs> quite the opposite. <laughs> um, so for like dried fruit and like juice, you know these things are different because either if they're dried, 
you know, it's more like a bigger piece. Sometimes the concentration of sugar tends to be a little bit more. Um, or, you know, you might find something like cranberries that are dried that have been sweetened, you know, in some sort of um, kind of sugar solution so that, that they're not so tart. Um, so that's got added sugar. Uh, juice, on the other hand, most juice is natural, but the problem is, is that it takes more fruit in order to get that four ounces of juice. So we just want to make sure that we're being mindful of keeping that within moderation. I know that sometimes it's a little more convenient or maybe it's more appealing to have a glass of juice versus, you know, actually eating a piece of fruit. But um, again, just keep that in mind when you are making your choices. All right, so the next piece, so this is a little different because when we talk about, you know, the prevention or the protection, um, you know, between carbs and fats and veggies and fruits, you know, here I bring up about, you know, milk and dairy products. Again, some people, so someone like myself who is lactose intolerant would have to be careful um, about milk and dairy products. I do better with um, yogurt than I do with actual milk. But in this, in this case, an eight ounce glass, you know, would be a great source of protein. Um, the one thing that we do need to keep in mind about dairy products is that they do contain sugars, um, which is pretty much what lactose is. And so there are going to be more carbs than a glass of milk. Um, versus maybe something, you know, like, well, certain cheeses. But we won't talk about cheese. We'll just kind of stick more with like the milk products. So kefir would be a great source of protein. Plus you get probiotics. Uh, Greek yogurt is a great source of protein. Um, you know, whether it's three-fourths of a cup to a full cup. Um, you know, if you were to kind of if you, again, if you were to use your hand, you could probably kind of, you wouldn't want to put Greek yogurt in your, in the palm of your hand to measure it out. Um, but try your best to eyeball it. So 0% fat versus 2% fat. If you were concerned about the fat from a cholesterol standpoint, um, or just how much, you know, fat you're getting into your diet, especially since this is more of an animal kind of fat, you know, then you could go with 0% versus like a 2%. But just remember, it's not as big of a difference. Um, you know, some people may like a zero fat versus a 2%. So it's kind of, kind of personal preference. Uh, cottage cheese is also another great source of protein. Not as many um, carbs, but definitely a great source of protein regardless. So we will move on. All right, so animal protein. So again, to build, um, also to repair. So using the palm of our hand, again, this is, well, roughly three ounces, maybe four. I've always kind of said that it was like a deck of cards you know, it was roughly three ounces, and I know a deck of cards is a lot smaller than, you know, the palm of maybe someone who's got a bigger palm size. So something to keep in mind, but roughly three ounces of protein is going to be about 20 grams, um, you know, which is a good, good amount, you know, especially when we talk about, you know, the protein that we need. Um, and if we remember this whole piece of like the weight loss, you know, versus like, you know, building muscle, you know, there's still the same kind of goal to where, you know, you need the protein, you know, to help with building muscle, but also for weight loss. So another piece to consider with like, let's say eggs, you know, two grams or two grams, two eggs would be 14 grams of protein you know, versus like egg whites, which is going to be, you know, so if an egg is roughly seven, that an egg white would be half of that. And so if you wanted to be a little more cautious about the cholesterol piece, 
then you could leave out the yolk or you could just buy egg whites um, in a carton, but you would need more egg whites in order to get the, the protein, right? There are egg substitutes out there. I've seen people doing kind of like a scramble egg situation with like ground flax, um, you know, which I have not tried. So let's move on to the next. So if we were to keep talking about protein, um, but we talk about more plant-based protein, if you remember from last week when I had mentioned the less legs that something has, the less saturated fat, um, you know, more protein, you would still get a good amount of protein, um, but you wouldn't have to worry so much about the saturated fat piece. But plant-based proteins, you know, whether it's tofu, uh, tempeh, um, and seitan, um, those are interesting sources because you're talking about some sort of like wheat kind of gluten or like vital wheat gluten that has like a protein element. Uh, but again, if you has, have a sensitivity to gluten, I would probably be a little cautious about the tempeh and the seitan. Um, but let's move on to uh, beans and, you know, certain legumes. You know, lentils is a great source of protein. Beans, edamame, peas. I know that peas kind of constitute as like a starchy vegetable, but peas are great when it comes to the fiber and the protein that they offer. Um, I love peas. I think they're fantastic. Um, so then certain, you know, like nut butters and, you know, seed butters and, you know, peanuts and, you know, cashews even though they're a healthy fat, they also do have protein as well. Um, and so if we talk about the serving size of that, it could be roughly about, you know, half of our thumb, or it would be more about the size of a golf ball, you know, for let's say like a nut serving, you know, which is roughly a quarter of a cup of nuts. So we'll move on. So speaking of fats, and I'm referring to healthy fats, again, the size of a golf ball or half of your thumb would be your choice. Um, you could also kind of base it off, like, let's say two dice, um, you know, would be a serving size, like, let's say like a cube of cheese, which I know would be hard for some people to be able to only eat, you know, two dice sized portions of a cube cheese. Um, but again, nuts, seed, nuts, seeds, nut butters, um, avocados, olives, you know, those are all great sources of healthy fat, but for olives, it's roughly five for an avocado. You could do one fourth of an avocado as a serving size, but again, keeping the size of the whole, you know, fruit. Um, in mind because I know some avocados are a lot bigger than others. Um, but again, avocado is a great source of healthy fat along with uh, minerals like potassium. So keep that in mind. All right. So if still sticking with the uh, theme of our healthy fats and the whole thumb piece, like I said, nut butters, nuts, olive oil, you know, avocado oil, coconut oil, um, you know, those are all good healthy fats. Butter is something I would do in moderation um, just because it is an animal-based fat, but I think that um, butter tends to kind of lend like a lot nicer flavor. Um, plus, it's not as bad as I guess like some people would say, like cooking with butter would be, you know, better than like maybe like a margarine, you know, or like a butter substitute that tends to have like, let's say that that fake butter is made with like soybean oil or like a canola oil. I don't want to really dive too deep into canola oil because I know that canola oil tends to have a lot of like mono and polysaturated fats, 
Um, but it's more the soybean oil that I tend to be a little concerned about when it comes to those butter substitutes. So just be mindful of the choice of fats that you use when you're cooking. All right. So we'll move on. All right. So we start diving into something that's a little more, um, it's a little bit more, um, you know, complex when we kind of are thinking of, you know, plate sizes and the portions, you know, when it comes to like activity. So again, kind of take this with like, with a grain of salt, you know, in, you know, when you're kind of considering yourself. So for a moderately active person, you know, let's say they walk about three miles per day, you know, at roughly three to four miles per hour. Um, and let's say they're getting their heart rate, you know, at least 50 to 60% of like their target heart rate zone. So if we were to think of an RPE scale or that rate of perceived exertion, that might roughly be like a four or a five to somebody, um, maybe a little higher, you know, a six. So we want to focus a little less on, you know, less carbs um, and, you know, in the sense of like grains, but making sure that a quarter of that plate is still a lean protein source, that a little bit more of a quarter, so, you know, um, aiming for like the colorful fruits and the veggies, which in my slide, I noticed that my veggies gets cut gets cut off, which is that kind of teal um, color, um, but also, you know, aiming for roughly that kind of like a quarter or a little more than a quarter of like grains, and then just aiming for about, you know, well, um, well, less than a quarter of uh, healthy fats. So keep that in mind. Um, so then I will move on. So if we talk about someone who's very active, you know, they could get away with more carbohydrates, um, you know, grains and stuff like that on their plate, um, especially if they are participating in exercise that's, you know, 45 to 60 minutes, you know, per day. And let's say they're, you know, doing maybe, you know, if the rule of thumb with the whole getting like our moderate minutes in, you know, from like the guidelines that we were talking about from the previous program, which was 150 minutes of moderate activity um, for five days, you know, or if we were to break that down, it'd be 30 minutes of moderate activity for five days per week. You know, someone like that could be considered, you know, a very active person or even someone who does 75 minutes of vigorous activity would definitely be considered a very active person as well. So they would need more grains. Um, protein source, still important, a quarter of the plate. You know, you could, you know, maybe lessen the veggies, but just by a little bit, um, those are still important. Um, and the fruits as well, again, because they are that prevention piece. So we wanna make sure that you know, we're kind of being mindful of not cutting out something that is super important. And I'm going to say that um, in the context of if we were, you know, trying to keep everything on the plate that, you know, is needed. I only say this just because you start getting into specific diets, you know, where they're going to cut out, um, you know, like a certain um, food group, like let's say the carbohydrates. So, you know, things that are more like keto or low carb. So you want to, you know, watch out for that, um, you know, when you're considering your plate. All right. So for a person with like a weight loss goal, or maybe someone who's um, not as active, we want to aim for more fruits and vegetables on that plate. Um, the high fiber piece, which I noticed on the other slide is actually in reference to the carbohydrates. I couldn't make the change, um, on here, but less carbs, that protein source is still a quarter of the plate. And then the healthy fats is still the same, 
um, just as it was um, with all the other ones. But just remember those healthy fats are important for energy and for hormones, all right? So here at Exos, we have a meal builder tool. Um, some of you may have, um, you know, spoke with us and we may have used this tool with you once before, but some people have not. This tool is pretty nice. Um, so pretty much there's certain steps that we would ask a certain client when it comes to, you know, um, you know, the kind of like meal builder that we're trying to create for them. And so step one is, you know, figuring out like a calorie range. And then step two would be a certain carbohydrate level. And then three would be pretty much, you know, we would um, find whatever certain calorie range, and then we would just email that PDF to that person. And so it's kind of all based around whether you're trying to lose, you're trying to maintain, or you're trying to gain. And so then depending on your activity level, that would determine your, your carb level, whether it's low or high. And so once we would deter determine that, then we would click one of these two links, um, you know, uh, in the box to the far right. So when we're speaking to um, a member, we, you know, one of the factors is what is their activity level like? You know, are they least active versus someone who is more active? You know, and so it'd be based around, you know, how many minutes per week they're getting um, and whether it's moderate or it's vigorous. So that's going to determine, um, again, the carb level and, you know, the meal builder itself, because it, there, there's many different meal builders that we have. So um, we try to tailor it in that sense of kind of narrowing, narrowing it down. So here for this meal builder, when we're speaking with a member, um, or a client, we're asking for specific things, you know, such as age, height, weight, uh, what their weight goal is, um, whether it's to maintain or lose or gain. Um, the sex of a, of a person um, is important. And then that activity factor, which is that grid that I showed in the previous slide, we would apply that here. And then this yellow box where it says recommended calories would be something that somebody would be aiming for. And so then if I backtrack to, you know, three slides where it said, you know, either low carb or high carb, I would click one of those and it would take me to a list of calorie uh, ones. And then we would just go from, from there. And then it would pull up like a, kind of like a meal sort of plan, um, but it's it's generic, but it's a good like kind of go by tool to follow. So not too, too bad, but you know, men and women are um, very different when it comes to portion sizes and um, you know, again, whether someone who has a more active, you know, lifestyle or you know, maybe a not so active lifestyle, those things are going to depend as well. Um, you know, age can factor into that. Uh, certain, you know, things that whether they may or may not be, um, you know, considered would be, you know, things like certain like family um, inheritances, you know, like certain diseases, like if you are a diabetic, and that's something that you were born with, that would be something to consider, you know, versus like, let's say injuries, you know, maybe you had surgery, like a big surgery. And so maybe it makes it hard for you to be active, um, you know, but we can always work around that. So the last piece is pretty much just a refresh of what we talked about for week two. Um, again, we were talking about portions, we talked about plating, 
um, or you know what a plate should look like. And then we also talked about the meal builder tool. So as a refresh from last week, you know, looking for high fiber carbohydrates that have at least grams of or three grams of fiber, if not more. And so ideally we're looking for, you know, someone to at least have 30 to 35 grams of fiber daily. Um, some people could get a little more um, and they're fine with it. Um, but you just want to make sure that you're at least getting 30. So then for carbohydrates, you know, it's roughly making up about 25% of your plate. Um, and then the next bullet point is including, including a lean protein source. Again, palm size would be roughly three ounces, if not more. And when it comes to plate, your plate, that it should make up roughly a quarter of your plate as well. And so again, that's for helping build, uh, maintaining the immune system, staying satisfied and making sure that that sense of fullness is something that we have. So that way we don't feel hungry, you know, at least three to four hours later. And then getting the healthy fats in our diet. So in this case, looking for, you know, like fish, you know, cold water fish, you know, would be great. Walnuts, chia seeds, ground flax seeds, olives, uh, um, avocado, certain oils, um, you know, those things are good for you when it comes to um, protecting the body. And again, from a serving size, that could be roughly half of the thumb, or it could be the size of a golf ball. So keep that in mind, but those anti-inflammatory foods are important. And then lastly, would be talking about, you know, adding color to the plate. So again, fruits and veggies, you know, are going to be the ones that make up the plate the most, you know, whether it's roughly a quarter of your plate to roughly almost, you know, half of your plate. So I said almost half um, and, you know, making sure that we are getting all colors of the rainbow. If we remember from last week's comment when I said that certain colors were the most eaten, that, you know, the blues and the purples and the, you know, tend to be the least eaten color, you know, versus like things that are more like, you know, the orange um, or, you know, the red tend to be more, you know, more eaten um, in that case as well. So just paying attention to your portion sizes, uh, keeping that in mind, um, which is relative to your goals, um, whatever that may be, whether it's to bait, uh, whether it's to build, maintain, um, or gain. Um, again, everyone is different. So the challenge activity, which is roughly the same from um, last week, is send me a plate. Um, that you made and, you know, maybe separate it or at least make it clear enough and send it to me and so I can see what it looks like. And otherwise, uh, I hope you learned something uh, very interesting, uh, something new. Um, that's the whole point of this webinar. And like I said, you know, keep watching these because they collectively as a whole um, are great uh, when it comes to understanding nutrition. So join me next week for week three um, for uh, Eat Well, Be Well, and have a great day, everyone. Bye.